to the BFF talk show. Uh, we were discussing more on Bhutan Premier League 2020 2021, uh, brought to you by Bank of Bhutan. Uh, today we have a very special guest, a uh, very, very important guest here. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Sisri, the president, club president of Timbu City FC, and Mr. Karma Jimmy, the president of Power FC. Uh, and uh, following that, we'll be discussing more on the title race of the ongoing BOB Bhutan Premier League 2021. We'll be discussing on the club development, we'll be discussing a lot on the infrastructure development, we'll be discussing a lot on how how all these clubs are running on the financial, on the infrastructure, on the grassroots, the holistic development of uh, football, uh, the club football, also club structure in the country. So, uh, may I introduce Mr. Shi Swing and Mr. Uh, Mr. Karma. So, uh, if, if Mr. Shi and Karma can introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Mr. Swing, as uh, mentioned by Jatu and the president of the Timpu City FC. And thank you for having the show. I'm Karma Jigmi, I'm the president of Power Football Club. Uh, been running club for the last four years. Uh, yes, they've been very experienced, one of the top, top club in the country. We have started from being an amateur club and now uh, to, to the semi-professional and these two people are responsible for taking the club to the professional uh, professional uh, uh, league and also to the professionalism of how the club structures have been running and we from Bhutan Football Federation we have a lot of admiration and a lot of, lot of respect for these two. Okay. Coming back to the title race, it is very, very crucial and exciting getting down to the last game of the tournament, which will be played at Wochu Sports Arena on 2nd October between Tempo City FC and Power FC. The defending champion is going away match to Power FC. So, uh, Mr. Shea, what do you think about the title race now? Uh, first of all, it's not very often that, uh, you know, in our league structure, that the, uh, the title race goes down to the wire. And uh, this is actually very good for the promotion of the game because it means that the interest in the league uh, is retained until the last ball is kicked. Mr. Mr. Karma? Uh, honestly, I don't want to give any comment. <laughs> I'm really nervous for the, 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 the last day. Nevertheless, I would love to win the title. Uh, like Aushi said, I think it's quite exciting because we are going till the end. So hopefully this time we'll be able to entertain the crowd. Yes, we'll go into the 19 minutes of the last game to decide the title race, but uh, we'll let you know that Power FC is leading with two points, and if they are, if they can draw or if they have a draw, also they win the title. But Timber City is a must win. I said um, previous year when Timber City won the title, uh, yes, they they won the game already. Uh, title against. Uh, FC and they didn't need to win in U yeah, UAS, yes. which was the last game so it was kind of boring because it already decided being the last match but like um, uh, like Mr. Ishi said yes this is very exciting and um, I think both the club owners are very passionate and also very nervous I know Mr. Karma he is he is very nervous about the game and he can barely watch the game I've seen it I've been with him also but for Mr. Ishi I think you're used to it now experience yeah, you could say, I don't think there's, uh, you can actually get experience when it comes to emotion. Mm -hmm. or maybe uh, we may not be able to show it because we are able to control our emotions a little better through this experience. But before we go further, actually I would really want to commend uh, Karma Jimmy for starting Power FC. Because ever since Power FC joined the league, you know, the level of uh, the competition and the professionalism in our football actually has uh, gone a step further. So this is actually a very good uh, thing for, for Bhutan, you know, like most of the clubs may not want, you know, you want to be the champion forever, but uh, it's good to have competition because the ultimate goal is uh, to develop football in the country. And for that, I would really like to commend uh, Karma Jimmy and all his uh, friends. Yes, the Bauer FC management has invested lots and lots in the football. They have developed their own ground, they have their own uh, training facilities. The management are very supportive, they have been passionate management which are led by their own family members which is very good to see. I think we need more of those uh, people with a very dedicated and passionate people to come in football. But we can't take away anything from Mr. Ishii, also he has been in football for decades now and he has invested a lot of his time. Uh, money is a different issue but a lot of his time, even his, uh, his son is playing for the national team and his daughter also playing for the national team. They show 
the the football passion run down in their uh, in their family only. So, uh, uh talking about the last day, the big day. Um, <coughs> do you think you're on a disadvantage side since you're going away uh, from here? Yeah. Actually, I wouldn't say we had a disadvantage because last year, if you remember, we we beat Sparrow yes, in their own backyard. Yes. So we are hoping to repeat the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mr. Governor Jimmy will really agree to it, but yes, we never know result because Temple City and Barra has been on. If you really look at the stats, there now I think the bar. We are bar, yes. The bar, the win and the draw yes. and the losses also they had bar. So this team, both the team are very strong with a lot of good players, young players, and this season also they have been performed uh, exceptionally well, except for a few matches where they. Really, uh, it was very unexpected result and some I may say, but Mr. Ishi, talk, talk us through to the tournament like, on this whole uh, BPL journey. Um, I think, uh, you know, when we, uh, as you know, we went for the AFC Cup in Maldives. And uh, to be honest, I think uh, that took uh, away a lot from our preparation for this league. league. Because after we came back, we were in quarantine for 21 days. By then, the registration uh, data closed. And a few players uh, could not, uh, although they were in our team, uh, we could not register them because uh, they couldn't uh, commit themselves because, like, some of them are working and uh, they did not get uh, approval from their parent organization. So, in that way, I felt that. Uh, and sometimes what happens is when, when you win and then when you're doing well, you tend to become a little complacent. You know? So, I think uh, that is what happened to us in the beginning, you know. So. Every day is a learning experience, and then we, we, we felt that uh, this year, like for example, we know that we, we are really short on the uh, goalkeeping uh, front, and actually the Drew Lyle goalkeeper was actually the, the number one keeper for Bhutan. Uh, he was, he had agreed to play in a team, but he could not commit for three matches. Mm -hmm. and then we also had other two uh, players who were both played for the national team, so we felt that, you know, maybe uh, there isn't so many competitive games that we need. So we so need like a skill because can you be bench yes, or yes. skill because uh, unlike the outfield players you can play only and now uh, that is our you know uh, slight concern because now we are just left with one for keeper. I think it's about the same for Mr. Komji uh, Yeah. But do you but do you guys have a good preparation for pre season good preparation for the BPL? Like we just said, we were expecting complacency from Temple City, but <laughs> 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 we just experienced really play. No, so, uh, because of the COVID, yeah, we also had this problem. Uh, although it didn't affect the pre-season, but mentally, I think we were also a little bit disturbed. We were like expecting some foreign players. That's why, like, you know, we could not uh, uh, put in the Bhutanese uh, uh, players. players. Yeah. So uh, suddenly, like, you know, because of all these disruptions, we could not bring them, and then we were back to you know, score one again. So yeah, we also had some problem. Yeah, but, uh, like I said. Uh Tim City had a goal, goalkeeper problem, but yeah, we, uh, Barra has had a lot of injuries. Uh, yeah. Kavira, she was injured, he was the tournament started, and in the middle also he had a lot of injuries. Yes. Yes. And the players are in the school, somewhere in the college, you couldn't make to the, the training also for the match. And especially because we are based in Paro, and then some of them are studying in Tempo. And even the college is quite far away from the base, so that's why they know. Uh, logistically, it was quite difficult for us because we need to bring them every day, we need to bring them from college. No, take them to take them back to college, and one of them is again sitting in uh, Gedu. So Gedu, yeah. it was a quite you know, hassle for us. So I think probably around six, seven of them are in the college. So it really affected that also. They all sudden. Uh, so before you move on to the next question, you know, <laughs> I mentioned the problem with our goalkeeper, but I want to put on record that uh, it was a concern. But fortunately, our goal, yeah. current goalkeeper, Parmasun Tenzin who was one of the star players when we had the staff under 18 tournament here in Thimpu. Uh, we were worried that if he got injured or something, then we had a problem. But we are very happy to say that, you know, uh, he's, he's absolutely fine and in top form. So now... <laughs> yeah, like uh, Vishay said, we're not taking anything from the players. They, they have been performing brilliantly all season. And uh, yes, despite all the uh, all the problems and all the injuries, they have been performing well for the, both the clubs, and that's why they're in the top of the league. Um, and they have been they are fighting for the championship. Like uh, Mr. Kamar mentioned, there's a lot of problems, a lot of problems, a lot of. Uh, we have uh, to run a club, and especially in Bhutan way, because we are not really professional right now, and there are a lot of problems. Like we said, the, the logistic problems. Students are there, you can't miss the classes. Uh, the, the 
uh, you don't have a training, you don't get the hundred percent training facilities, and also uh, the teams are not training well because the, they miss a lot of students miss the training session. Maybe uh, it might be same for Team City also, but that's the case for the Power FC. Going to that now, this is where the, we begin our one of the very crucial points to be here: the development of the club. How you, uh, how you uh, guys, still the, the energy, the money, the passion, you know, the inspiration. Where does it all come from? Because COVID nineteen has hit you hard. I know because uh, Michel is a uh, tour operator himself, and uh, you know, two thousand uh, twenty and twenty one is not a good year for him. Financially, also for Kamiji is uh, was same. So, how do you manage it? Uh, fortunately, you know, last year I remember when we had a meeting with uh, the football president Ashim Sejo. Uh, basically, the meeting was to see how the football federation could uh, help the clubs uh, uh, tide over the COVID situation and then still be able to pay the players. And I remember clearly my opening remark to Tasha. I said, when when COVID hit, I was not worried about my business at all. My biggest worry was how am I going to sustain my football club. And in that regard, uh, thanks to FIFA and then Football Federation, they have given us uh, some two million. financial support of two million yes, last two million. year, which uh, through which we were able to continue paying our players' uh, salary. So the same, same is the case, case with us. Uh, that really helped us. Uh, I still remember, like, uh, we needed to pay the salary to the, the players. Yes, they all uh, basically moved from Timpu to Paro um, with the, the, the belief in us, thinking that, okay, we will be there to help them out. And that was the biggest concern for me. And then we got the support. I think at least my players, they you know, agreed to uh, take a cut, pay a cut. And then that really helped us to you know, keep them uh, going. There's there also difficult times come, but they are there, they've been here and um, talking about the club sustainability. Um, yeah. so and now we, we're looking at, this is the very short term, um, like, yeah. so, but for the long term, like, we need to have a certain uh, plans, certain goals that have been put into for the club sustainability. I don't think you want to give up very easily because you have dedicated so much of your time and money in this. So what are you looking at? Actually, you see, uh, this is a very important question. A lot of times I feel, you know, if I'm really wasting my energy and if it's really worth it. But the fact that uh, now, uh, in fact, uh, if any like uh, government officials are uh, watching this program, I hope uh, they will understand and realize the importance that sports is playing in our country. And when we talk about sports in our, in our local language in Zonka, we say same. And same is considered something that is unimportant, you know, something that you do when you're when you're into pastime. But we want to emphasize the importance of sports, not just uh, for the, uh, the benefit to your health and the social thing, but in terms of employment, employment generation. For example, just look at the amount of number of people here just covering an interview. You know, if there's no people, you know, they want to be have to look for other other job and other thing. True. So, so similarly, you know, I feel that it's very important to uh, for for us to actually create awareness. Uh, the importance of sports. So what uh, she what really wants is the integration, the support from the government, support from the private sector, support from the private sector where they can invest in this uh, sports, not only football but other sports where they can uh, really promote it, where they can really have a positive impact on how the uh, how the sports is not only looked at at the health benefit but also on the economic uh, benefit where you know, there's a lot of uh, employment generation, uh, revenue generation and also when the teams or uh, foreign players or foreign teams are coming in there's a lot of generation leverage for example the hotels and uh, yes. airline businesses are there, the local guys are there so this is very uh, very much on the sustainability Mr. Kamal, uh, what are your plans? Yeah, sustainability is I guess is the biggest concern and, uh, and the biggest question for us in the sports industry uh, we have been trying to uh, make it sustainable, so we are trying to, uh, to explore ideas how we can make it sustainable. Like for example, we are looking into merchandising, how, how we can be, like even academy, academy is helping us because our whole idea to expand academy is to increase the fan base so that gradually we will have enough fan for following Power FC. And one aspect is like maybe we should, no, at one point of time we should also sell, start selling tickets 
So, so but to do that again, we we tried to do it in the second season, but that was not feasible because we didn't have good uh, number of fan base. So, only option is to increase the fan base, and that can be done through you know, academy like this. So that why I'm saying here is probably I think the other clubs should also you know, follow our, our example. Like we have already uh, we are already here in Thimphu, so so in future we might go out of Thimphu besides Paro. So. That is one area we, where we want to like, you know, focus and increase the fan base so that uh, we will be able to sustain the club. So like Muskabajan is a fan, are the most important part of football structure and also development of football. This is where all this, the, the culture, the football culture, the fan culture gives really uh, the weight to the beautiful game. Uh, but I must say that Power FC is a little bit ahead of the rest of our clubs because they have their own infrastructure, they have their own ground and not only one uh, football, uh, not only one ground but they have a mini ground, two mini grounds where one is for the uh, youth and one is for the nine-sided players and also they have a good ground and good infrastructure there in Power FC and I think they are a bit ahead of the rest of the club maybe in terms of infrastructure and also the management area where they have employed a lot of uh, good people, good coaches so that they are uh, they are evolving and they are developing as as we speak and I think uh, city and other big clubs also like yeah. looking for such infrastructure. So it's uh, good you brought up this point because uh, one of the biggest advantages that Power FC has over other clubs is because they have their own ground. And talking of having a own ground, actually I see no reason why we can't help have our own ground as well because there are many grounds that are unusable in Kipu just like vacant. And all, all it needs is uh, some uh, the people at the decision making level to be a little open minded. <coughs> For example, we we were in discussion with uh, Zeluva School. The school was very very excited to enter into an agreement with us, where, whereby we will develop the ground and manage it. And if we have, were able to do that, you know, not only uh, we would be able to generate some revenue for our club to uh, uh, to sustain our club through the uh, hiring out of the ground, but the school would have benefited, the community around the area would have benefited. But today, go and see what the Zeluka school ground is. It is the store for the sand and stone for the uh, uh, smashing of the road. Similarly, I've also approached uh, Mokitang High School. The principal there is very excited and she's still very hopeful that we will be able to uh, get uh, approval. Today, the ground is, is like an urban jungle. It's used, used as a parking lot. So that is the reality. The thing is, uh, the facilities exist, and I think one of the problems we have in our business mindset is if there is a donor, we don't want to depend too much on donors. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, to donor. We don't need donors. We are there. I mean, I don't have money, but I can uh, mobilize resource uh, funds to develop this ground, and I'm not going to carry away the ground. You know, it is an immovable object. It will remain there, and uh, the uh, the school can always uh, put in the, their interest. School or the Ministry of Education can always uh, put in their interest in the. MOU that you will uh, assign and everything will be based on that. So there is no question of... I no think that's what yeah. Power yeah. Power yeah. did with the and, you know, In fact, uh, this is exactly whenever we when, whenever we go, this oh, Power FC is making a lot of money. And that for me to be is a very sad thing. It's not important how much Power FC is making money. They should be happy that they're making money. In fact, people should be seeing how, you know, Power is one of the most uh, advanced districts in Bhutan. And if not for Power FC, we didn't even have a ground there. And now, because of the ground, you see the level of uh, football oh, has really, really increased in, yes. in, in uh, Paro. Paro yeah. They have over 500, 600 kids who are all playing really good. So in a few years' time, Bhutan will have a very strong national team because our right, like grassroots level base has really widened and the quality of training, everything is much better. I think last time we were talking, me and Mr. Kamu was talking on the same issue, saying that yes, because we, we have done a lot of grassroots programs and we are not... We might have a uh, quantity, but we're not getting the quality. So I think uh, the parents, especially the parents, are investing their money uh, on the children to play in the private uh, where they're the good coaches and they're looked after really well. I think uh, Power FC also now managed to, uh, like they said, they're expanding their business, a business in the terms where they're trying to expand their brand, which is a Power FC brand here at Timpu. Also, they started their academy and they're also planning to go beyond Timpu now. Maybe next will be Punaka or Wong Lead, and they're slowly there. I think that's the plan, right? So that's the plan for the Power FC. They want to expand their clubs uh, brand all over, but like um, Steve Shishi also touched on it. 
it's very difficult to get the infrastructure, especially the ground here at Timbu. I think maybe we don't know really what the problem is, but we know uh, there are a lot of ground that can be used and can be built as a, a standard uh, footballing international ground where the clubs can also play and also uh, the school can use the ground, the Tonde can use the ground where there is a co coexistence of uh, both the, both the parties where they have a lot of uh, mutual benefits from having a ground. Having said that, um, on the financial ground, now, how do you manage the financial? Because you have to play for, uh, pay for the coaches, you have to pay for the players, and maybe uh, you have to buy balls or equipments for all the refreshments, and there are a lot of costs involved. How you, Power FC, and how you manage it? Yeah, as of now, we don't have, uh, I mean, the income generating activities that we have is negligible. We have a uh, youth training, we have about 70 kids and only about uh, 50 or so pay and that uh, the money generated from that we have to pay the coaches and then we also sell some jerseys and one of the things that I'm actually trying to explore is uh, you know there's like uh, in Europe as well as in Hong Kong you know there are people who look for uh, collective, collective yeah, items yes like uh, classic football the jerseys process. so actually I'm in touch with uh, one of uh, uh, such uh, Avenue where we can sell our jerseys, but all that is going to be actually a very little amount. But uh, the major income is through actually donations from well wishers. Like for example, uh, people must be wondering what you, you know on Tim uh, Sage's jersey you see Java. People must be trying to Google what's Java and what do they sell. Actually, they are not going to find anything. Java is just a nickname of one of my American clients, and he gives us nine thousand dollars every year just to put his. <laughs> put his name on a jersey, so that is uh, one avenue. And then the other thing is like, uh, especially because you know, like our national television does not broadcast our matches. So to get sponsorship is very difficult because at the end of the day, the people who put, put in money, they need returns. If there is no more exposure watching our matches, yes, then more they, they don't get any exposure. So there is yeah. no, so in that way, maybe the national media and all, you know, talking of national media that day, there was a big write-up about Manchester United. Did they lose to Aston Villa or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The World Bank cover was about that, and then Jamie Reeves died, and there was a small box, you know, a high quality five to play you one. So that is the level of importance given to local sports. You know. The same is the case with uh, Paris, because we have been struggling ever since we started. I still remember uh, calling up Ovishir when we actually you know, thought of opening up the club. So I called up Ovishir and said, no, um, we are planning to open the club. First thing that Ovishir told me was, do you have time and money? <laughs> you know, I was quite surprised because that was the you know, answer for me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand actually you know, what he was trying to mean. Now after four years, no, yeah. I understood what he was trying to say. It means a lot, no, we need to pump a lot of money. money. And you need to give time, like, unlike any other business, like we are doing businesses, uh, this is completely a different business. You really need to give your time and then you need to put a lot of money. Like I wish you said, we have uh, quite a good number of supporters who are putting in money. Yes, and like Drew Kishia, for, 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 for instance, because he is not probably not getting anything by putting his name on our jersey. Yes. Yeah, but still he is willing to spend like, you know, quite a huge amount on us. And he has agreed to do it you know, so long he can. You know, uh, he can. So I think there are people who are interested, even like most of the banners that are put on in the, the ground. ground. They are all our friends. Basically, they are trying to help us. They are not eating, they're they're not eating anything because we don't have our TV coverage or no, media coverage. So basically, they just are coming up and saying, okay, look, we want to help you. We give you that, this much. So half of the revenue that we spent, probably we are getting from the collections, like donations, collections, all this. And uh, half for, for now, I think we are putting in from our own pocket. Okay. And then of course, we are getting support from federations. That is also, I think, helping us a lot. And uh, till, till now, we are never, not in a position to like, no, support the club. And the revenue, like, like we should mention, like, more, most of the people think that we are making a lot of money from the ground. That is not true, because we have spent so much. So much. We have spent so much that probably it would take almost 10 years to like, no, uh, get the cost. Yes. Yeah. So whatever right we're spending on Power FC, we end up spend um, almost like 80 to 90 crores on just on the club. Imagine, people doesn't believe me when I say that, no? They always think that since we are from a business background, they always think that, okay, yeah, there yeah, must yeah. be something. These people will not invest on football without getting back anything. So that is not true. We spend a lot of money. 
with the hope that we will be able to contribute in football. And, and the reason why we started Football Club was because we are really passionate. We really wanted to do something. And that is a way of giving back. To the because community. we really love football. So we don't feel like we are working or we are spending money or we are wasting time. So uh, when it comes to sustainability, I think it's really difficult. Like, you know, financing right now still we are putting in from our own pocket. Yes, like what the president said, Running a club is not an easy, it's never easy because it takes a lot of, lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment and a lot of passion I think. And these two, the president uh, have shown us the way that yes, if you are willing to go for it, they'll, uh, they'll fight till the end and we are very proud of it. Uh, Down for Fashion is really proud of these two clubs. We're not just segregating these two clubs but other clubs are coming up but this group Two club has been on top of the food chain for almost like three, four years, and they've been telling us, they've been supporting us, and they've been showing us the way, in the way that uh, other clubs can also follow their lead, and it's happening. It's a very sad scenario here in Bhutan because we have only one state broadcaster, and uh, if you really look at it, the way the clubs uh, in other countries or in the European or they make money from their broadcasting rights, selling their broadcasting rights and the advertisement they're coming is through the broadcast advertisement where they have a lot of marketing mileages and they have a lot of uh, exposure, the brand exposure and also due to a lot of, uh, I, I must say, the fan base where they're like, they are like thousands, like 60,000, 70,000 people are coming to watch the game and also there are like 0.5 million, 6 million people watching online or uh, or watching at, uh, or watching the TV and that's what the sponsor, the generation of the fund, the sponsors comes in, not even the local sponsors but from also the big brand sponsors will come in if they see this type of stats and this type of um, uh, numbers but uh, Bhutan is a very small country, we are still developing and we are trying our bits and pieces, we have done our online uh, but we are still requesting, we are still evolving, like we said, we are still developing also Bhutan football is not only not also very professional, we are also de developing and we hope that this two club will uh, show us the way, guide us the way, push us through because they have been pushing us also and we have been pushing them also, which is a very positive impact on us also and also on the club. Musician, now this is very important, uh, I don't know, very important, but I feel like you have uh, managed to start, you have managed to drive, see? Before it was in the city, and you are like coming. Uh, Power FC also has gone outside to play in the AFC Championship, but I think your team has gone more. Yes, so, how do you like the experience that it brings in the, 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 the traveling experience, the exposure that it brings in? Does it really have a very uh, positive impact, or does it really drain down the money? You know. Uh, last this year, actually, we've been very unfortunate because of the COVID. The grant that we got from AFC was reduced by as much as $10,000. So it was uh, quite tough for us. And then also we did not have a home game. We just had an away game. Yes. So that took uh, a large uh, opportunity, a big opportunity for us to generate some revenue. Because had we uh, been able to have a home game here, we could have generated some revenue through the sale of cricket case as well as advertisement board and all. So, so it has actually been uh, quite tough actually. Tough. You know? So I mean, a lot of people actually do not understand what goes at the background. For example, uh, people think, oh, these guys uh, are running a club. We get lots of requests from people who don't understand, asking for uh, donation for balls, jerseys. They don't realize that. What they don't realize, I may be the president of the Timbuktu Football Club, but what many people may not realize is, after the match is over, a lot of time, my wife and me are washing all the dishes because my wife is cooking for the entire team. <laughs> these, these are things that happen at the, at the background. Actually, you know, one time I thought maybe I should send this story to an international. Uh, yes, it is. Actually, may make a good, good, good feature story. Yeah, and make a good story and maybe uh, they're able to generate some revenue to support. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, just to continue no, what Avisha said, like, no, uh, we had a similar incidences. Like, luckily, I had a very good coach who is very supportive. In the first season, we had to do the, the, the jersey. You know, we had to wash right. the jersey of the player. Then, this, literally, I was hanging the jersey in the uh, changing room before the, the kickoff. So, like, no, then you have to carry the uh, teeth. Uh, tea and snacks, snacks for the players, like, no. so uh, that was the experience. But it was a good experience, like no, you learn, get to learn a lot. 
And coming back to your question on EFC's experience, I think that was a really good experience for me because uh, when you get to go out, you uh, yeah, because you have been playing here only. So when you get to go out, you experience all this professionalism uh, right from the logistic arrangements. Like, you know, when you have to do travel outside Bhutan, it's, it's quite difficult. When you have to buy the tickets for around 30, 40 people, it's quite difficult. And then at the same time, you need to arrange hotels, you need to you know, negotiate with them, food, everything. Like, you know, this actually really helped us to understand you know, how uh, complex is running the club. And then, like like, like she said, uh, we were fortunate because uh, we got to play twice. No, initial like first time when we played, I guess we didn't uh, uh, get to keep anything. Basically, like no, it was a great event from what EFC gave, gave us. But when we played the second match, I think uh, we managed to save yeah, some because nice. like no, yes, we were playing within one week and then we had two home games and uh, sale of ticket was quite good that time. Yes. Was, no? uh, so it really helped us. And then overall, like the experience was great. Now, if we get opportunity, I think we'll be able to do it better, and we can probably save also. It's more on the financial discipline. Yeah. Just uh, one, one more point. I mean, because we are so passionate about football. I mean, when we have a good news, uh, going to play outside, we get very excited to expedite his uh, uh, joining and sure. getting a professional contact. To the extent that we we don't uh, realize the opportunity that we are missing. And actually, for example, when Sergio Gelsen is now playing for Character Blasters, when he joined Punjab the first time, he was in our club. The moment there was some interest in that, we were so excited to give him a release letter. The, the thought of uh, making, money. making money and asking a transfer fee never even occurred to us because at that point of time, to be honest, I was very concerned that if we say we want a transfer fee, it may jeopardize his uh, opportunity. Getting, getting yeah, opportunity. And Similar, I think, with your, you know, because you went to Bangalore from your club, and did you get any? Not then, around uh, Rasmus. Rasmus. Oh, Rasmus. Okay. Mm -hmm. did, did you, you get enough of it? We, we, had a, we had a bit of experience, I guess, that I think every club should understand what happened actually. Of course, we, we didn't want money, but what actually happened was, uh, there was a request from them to saying that, could you please send us an NOC, no, just to apply for the, uh, for his uh, yes. transfer, yes. and that was understanding that okay, we will just issue, and then they will let him play here. But today we issued NOC, and tomorrow they apply for ITC, and there was okay. like no stopping for that. And then he was here for half of the season, not mm. playing football. Not playing football, yes, I agree. Yeah, actually, sure. see, from that experience, uh, we did. You know, you're talking of learning from experience. We did learn from that experience because you know it was like a uh, wake up call because when we had Jay Hart. You remember the yes, uh, English book, the English player, yeah, yeah, whom you gave in the game, English book. So similarly, he was, we were halfway through our season and one day he just disappeared and he joined uh, Punjab in Nirwa. But thanks to FIFA where they established this, uh, you know, the international player transfer, That's right. you know, yeah, that really protects not just the players as well as the clubs. Because we made so much investment in getting him, getting him to Bhutan and then, you know, paying, actually we, I didn't have to pay for his house because my brother gave his flat free. So when he disappeared, and anyway, we spent so much on his salary plus his airfare. So then the ITC, the International Transfer Certificate, actually uh, came to our rescue because when Punjab Minera wanted to register him, they couldn't they register, register because he was still he, at the ITC. his ITC was with us. So we were able to get some, some money. money. Yeah, some money back. Yes, yeah, like we discussed, it's very difficult to manage uh, the clubs in Bhutan, like President's uh, experience, his wife cooking for the players and the President and wife himself washing the dish after they, uh, they finish <laughs> their tea and snacks, like for Mr. Karmaji, also the President, he has a lot of experience, he, I have seen him himself in the ground carrying balls and cones and also carrying tea snacks and offering to the players. This is not very uncommon, this is very common because this is all the learning stage and they are doing not because uh, they want to do it, because they are doing it because of their passion, they want to get connected with their players, they want to connect with their football, uh, the local community and also to understand the extent where they want it, they wash the dishes and also the jerseys, I think they have washed uh, most of it, of the players also because we have a very big problem which is a very uh, we don't have really good support from uh, the government also i must say from the private sector also i think now some of our sponsors like bob and telecom and also um, 
Jukia has been coming forward and supporting us like Chaba, some his uh, own friends are supporting and for Skama Jimmy also is uh, entirely supported by his family, the family members and also good well wishes and it's very not easy to run a football club in the country but when people see it, I think they say it very easy because it's very glamorous, it's very glamorous, there's a lot of uh, talks on social media, there are a lot of good pictures, there are a lot of good videos and people think it's maybe glamorous, they're making a lot of money out of it but it's, uh, ground reality is very different and only people with the passion is managing the club uh, as of now but um, we will close the talk show uh, but I would like to hear last word from two of them on the BPL title right? because that is what I'm also really excited about and also I think all the fans who are watching this also very excited about the upcoming last match, the championship match, the title, the title match. Okay, so bef before we get on to the, uh, the uh, question, I, I would just want to add a few words about what sports has done for me. Like many of my players, I I've known them since the age of uh, you know, 11, 12. And for me to actually uh, see them grow into you know, young, confident uh, men, it gives me, uh, you know, that is my biggest trophy, I would say. You know, the winning the title and all, uh, you know, it can happen, is, is, is a bonus. But the biggest, uh, <coughs> biggest trophy, I would say, is the impact that we've been able to make on many of the young, uh, young kids. And as you know, you know, like for example, earlier I was talking about the power of sports. Sports actually gives a lot of hope, confidence. Character. You know, you watch TV coverage on the war in Syria, you will invariably see a kid wearing a soccer jersey in the middle of all, all the buildings that have been bombed. There may be a coverage of famine in Ethiopia, again you will see a guy with a soccer jersey. So football is a very, very powerful uh, tool and I hope our uh, this, uh, policy makers and all will also realize the importance of sports and, uh, you know, and then give us the necessary support, you know, not just financial support, a policy support will be more than enough. You know. And then now coming to the title race, uh, sometimes like last year, when we, uh, before our last match, as you mentioned earlier, we had already, uh, the title race was already decided, so it was a very, very relaxed, relaxed atmosphere, and then uh, we could print, you know, jerseys, which yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. this year, you know, it, <laughs> we, we don't know whether we should do that, you know, none of you will ever know, because if, if, if we do and we don't win, those things will never come out in the yeah. open, okay. <laughs> but it is, it is a very difficult situation, because we don't know what to plan, you know, yeah. we cannot uh, just end the match and go home, uh, well, we need to plan, we need to plan, plan some sort of celebration, but then we don't want it to be a damn celebration, so <laughs> we hope, uh, you know, uh, just like Karma said earlier, there's a lot of pressure. Like sometimes in the middle of the night, I get up and say, "Oh, tomorrow I must go and say this." You know, the coach takes care of all the tactical aspects because. But we feel that through our experience, we can share some of our, you know, how to advises, advises and deal with pressure. You know, I've started giving issuing vitamins to all my players, <laughs> so that's one of my secrets. Okay, because as you know, this, the season is just changing. Yeah. There's a very very high chance Sensor, that uh, yeah, you know, flu. Uh, people get the flu, so I've just started giving vitamin. You know, we don't give them before we give them in the grounds and make sure everybody eats it. So these are you know small, small things, things, small things that we are doing in preparation for this big day. Yes. Uh, except for the game preparation, uh, think like you know, we have not done anything because we don't want to apprehend anything so that it spoils the day. <laughs> <laughs> really, like no, I'm honestly I'm saying like no, I'm quite nervous also, but quite excited also because. Uh, uh, it will be quite exciting. We had a similar incident in 2018. Remember, we were supposed to get draw and then leave the, the trophy. I think we but did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, the <laughs> city uh, did us. So, so now we don't want to uh, <laughs> take anything for granted. <laughs> no, for the last day, no preparation. I think except for the I think match preparation. That's it. Otherwise. Uh, Nothing else. <laughs> That's a very uh, different approach from two presidents. Yes, please remember that if you do the small things correctly, the big things will happen. Like the city is already preparing for the change season. Uh, they are starting giving their play vitamins, which is very good. Um, uh, if you go, you're going for the very big match, you need to be fit mentally and physically fit, and not. And both the presidents are not taking anything for granted. Uh, they are calm as cucumber, but I know deep in, uh, deep down inside, but uh, <laughs> very passionate about it, and they are like 
literally uh, fighting their emotions uh, deep down and uh, we'll stop our talk show here and very good news for the football fans we will be broadcasting the final match of BOB Premier League uh, Power FC was at Temple City the title race on BBS uh, 2 p.m. please join us live there on BBS and those who can't reach the BBS we have Bhutan Football TV Mike Uju you can live uh, catch the live matches there also please do support us please support both the, all the fans please do support City and Power FC I think it's going to be a very very good match and a very uh, entertaining match for all of us Thank you and touch the